Aquarius Sun Moon Arising April 2024, as I call it, the most important month this year. The month starts, of course, with Mercury retrograde, but the pivotal event, one of the pivotal events is the eclipse in your third house, the solar eclipse. Is the second eclipse, they always come in pairs. The first one is in March, at the end of March in your ninth house, but you'll feel it for the next three months. The second one, 8th of April, the bigger eclipse, the solar eclipse in your third house. These eclipses show the changes that are coming for you this whole year. It's not just for April the 8th, you know. You might have felt it even a few weeks before that or a month. And there is this, the, whatever eclipse has happened, there is earthquake, let's say, on Earth as well. Earthquakes happen around eclipses. But the earthquake in your soul is happening on the axis of the third and uh, nine houses so there is a big shift in your consciousness this is the axis of consciousness the lower everyday mind as we call it your self narrative how you talk to others how you talk to yourself and your higher mind we also the house of god the higher mind is you know is your higher self is aspect of god and how you connect to the higher worlds um, so this is where the biggest shift is happening this is where the biggest earthquake is happening. You might notice something almost like, almost like, in a, and remember, there won't be eclipses in Aries in your third house with the North Node for another 19 years. So it's a rare opportunity, something to shift in your perspective, how you talk to yourself. Uh, I already just a month or two before the eclipse started doing affirmations. Third house is words where the eclipse is happening how you talk to yourself, how you talk in your mind, how you talk to others. And I really transform because eclipses are about transformation, shedding of the old skin. Of course, eclipses are caused by a dragon in mythology that eats the sun or the moon. And it's a dragon, a snake, it sheds its skin. So the biggest meanings of eclipses, an internal earthquake that leads to changing of the skin, becoming, renewing yourself. And for me, it was, it's already been working. I'm sure there is more to come <laughs> on this axis. But I rewrote as an Aquarius rising how I talk to myself with affirmations. It was very hard the first couple of weeks. And now when I have nothing to do, I'm washing plates, I'm showering, whatever. I'm doing, I choose two, three affirmations. Uh, I don't even have to fill them. I'm just talking to me in this positive way with those affirmations. Uh, I'm an athlete or whatever, I'm healthy, I'm enough, I forgive love and accept myself, um, I'm free from the desire for, uh, for sugar, whatever, choose two, three, honestly, it, it's, I've tried it before, it hasn't worked, but this time it did, because this eclipse access is opening, is opening it for you, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others, there will be a shift in your mind, in your lower and higher mind, Aquarius so this is where the biggest change is happening and it can feel like an eclipse of the mind for a little bit they might at certain point already March April you can feel like oh I'm losing my mind because the sun the light is eclipsed from there but the light is eclipsed so a new face can show a new light can come after that and Aries is about renewal new energy new way of thinking new way of talking to others new way of communicating uh, shift of perspective of consciousness of a higher mind letting go old beliefs and uh, during the a month before this eclipse in the ninth house i started letting go because it the ninth house eclipse is about letting go the third house eclipse is about putting in something new there because this one was a full moon eclipse with south node so you can let go and you're letting go of some old held beliefs and programs this is how we're programmed from society from culture from religion from uh, propaganda news and I started saying I'm canceling the program of this and this it's such simple confirm uh, affirmations and I don't even need to feel them and it's working and I'm like why is it working this time because this access is open for us when there is eclipses eclipses thin the veil between the visible and invisible world and make manifestation easier and if you align your mind to lower thoughts to thoughts of desire, to thoughts of uh, addiction, to thoughts of enviness, to thoughts of anger, or down talking on yourself, you detract from the lower astral because those around eclipses, it's open, you know, even in ancient times, 
People said, oh, don't go out during eclipses because all kinds of devils, devils roam around. But also there is an opening from the higher realms. So you, your vibration needs to be in place so you can attract more of the higher realms. And now you're rewriting your mind. And if you notice yourself, you're having fearful thoughts or uh, uh, fears about the future, ninth house or self-doubts and how you talk to yourself, immediately start substituting with something new, with new thoughts, new and deprogram. I'm programming, I'm deleting the program of, you know, we're using this eclipse in the ninth house, I'm deleting the program of, uh, you say it, whatever it is for you, for low self-worth, I'm deleting the program that starting my business will be hard or whatever. <laughs> Whatever you want, I'm deleting the program that having relationships is hard work and so on. Because these are all programs that we work through. And you're instilling a new program here. Consciously by repetition. Third house is about repetition. Another way it can play out this eclipse is there is some shake up in your relationships with siblings. With some big change happening there. With teammates, workmates. Maybe if you work in a team, there can be some big changes. Maybe... Uh, and this eclipse is about new things. So maybe new people will enter your life over the next one year. New collaborators, associates, third house is connected to such people. New people in the team, maybe your work team will, teamwork, work team, <laughs> whatever, will change and you'll get new associates to collaborate with. Or maybe you'd learn third house's new skills. Suddenly, if you've had resistance to learning certain skills, this eclipse can make you enthusiastic over the next one year, not, not necessarily immediately, to learn some new skills. What is it? Maybe you can't, Maybe you want to learn French. Maybe you want to learn how to code, how to train AI <laughs> to, for something. This will, the fear goes, I mean, initially there is fear because it's an eclipse, but the, the passion of areas that this eclipse unlocks is life-giving. So you can learn, it can be a sign omen for you. Yes, eclipse on the mind, but you, there is a big transformation happening in your mind and you learn to be more courageous to take uh, initiatives. Third house is the house of initiative. This eclipse is asking you to take some initiative, to talk in a different way. And it's asking you as well, to use your communication and your words and what you read and watch. Third house is everything. Input information, output information. <laughs> this is, <laughs> you know, this is your computer here. Uh, what are you watching? What are you outputting? Are you filling your head with negative thoughts? Are you, uh, you know, so what are you consuming there in your mind and what you're getting out? You're renewing that. You're changing that. Um, and because the eclipse is happening with Chiron, conjunct Chiron, there is a great healing opportunity. Chiron is the wounded healer. What wounded thoughts do you have? And that you can transform and you can heal a big part, even of physical conditions that are due to negative thinking or to negative self-talk uh, or to what you're putting in your mind. If you're watching a lot of superficial things, things that are wasting your time or things that are negative, things that are uh, showing the depravity of others. Mm, how do you expect this to be healing? But Chiron, the conjunction with the eclipse, can make you have a realization there and be very vigilant, and not vigilant, but almost like enthusiastic to remove the input and to change the output. Also, the, your social environment around you can change. There can be some very fated trips that are happening for you over the next one year as well as the third house. Maybe learning something new that can create self-made wealth for you. A new business plan, business idea, new skill that will improve your self-made wealth in some way because it's gaining something here. The North Node Eclipse, North Node is to gain something. Maybe some friends or mates will enter your life that will be there for a long time. But there might be some crisis around such matters as well. Of course, it's an eclipse. Siblings, relatives, people in your environment. Uh, cars, um, credit cars is the third house. Cars, transportation. Um, just around the time of the eclipse, avoid if you can travel. But if it's unavoidable or it's on the 8th of April. So yeah, this is what else can this third house do? Maybe new beginning with... Uh, 
I said, way of thinking, maybe travels that will be important for you, short term and whatever, uh, new communications of any source, new information, learning, knowledge, and so on. Then the other big event that is happening is that Saturn and Mars are joining together in your second house from Ascendant, of course, Sun or Moon, and they're starting a new cycle for two years. They're joining together on the 10th of April, but their influence will, they'll start something, maybe it's already starting because they're close, they'll start something that you'd be working on for two years. And Saturn and Mars are very much about hard work that you put yourself. Saturn is your own efforts and your own perseverance and being very meticulous and deliberate about things. And we, we're talking about money here and values because it's your second house. And Mars wants you to have willpower. So Saturn and Mars will help you build those qualities over the next two years when it comes to resources, to money, to your self-worth. Uh, so it, it can even involve some kind of a re, uh, re-evaluation of how you spend, of what you consider valuable, of what you consider beautiful, what you consider tasty. And it can be the start of a process that you really change the second house. Second house is the five senses. So you might be required to work very hard on finances, for example, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to come like an inspiration, a sudden change with effort. Uh, on money, saving, maybe you decide to start some, to, to, you know, buy property or something and we'll talk why it's possible for this or to settle down and you need to save. So you need to learn the hard way, Saturn Mars, through willpower, through your own personal involvement, how to manage your resources and that's a two-year thing and after that you have a lot more resilience a lot more masterfulness mastership over matters of resources property and Saturn and Mars are non-apologetic they you can get rid of possessions as well just throw out Saturn and Mars don't like clutter second house is your possessions just remove clutter it's gonna be very good to for this this first 10 days of April or the whole April at some time if you can declutter clean Everything that is blocking the energy of abundance, second house is money. Second house is how you're supported. Just clean it up, remove it. And Saturn and Mars, they both like simplicity. They both like kind of uh, elegance. Saturn likes elegance. Mars likes not too much fluffy stuff. Imagine a soldier with fluffy stuff and (laughs) too many things, you know. So that can be the beginning of the healing process uh, and this process of, you building more streamlined, elegant approach to possessions, to resources. Another way it can play out is you can totally change over those two years starting now how you eat second houses, the food we get. It will require ability to say no, which is Saturn. It will require some self-restraint, Saturn. Uh, but you have the willpower of Mars to do that and the soldier-like focus of Mars. So you can really like, I, we started fasting with my husband now. I'm not depriving myself of food, but it's just vegan food. Uh, and it's, it's surprisingly easy for me because Saturn and Mars are like really, usually I try and I don't have like the motivation, which is Mars. I don't have the staying power Saturn. This time has been like, you know, every day I cook and second house is to cook food. So you can uh, embark on a, two-year thing of learning to cook it's not an easy thing but it is you know saturn mars can really do you are most satisfied with the results of saturn mars if you put the efforts because it comes to you through efforts and but of course there might be some financial issues for some of you not for everyone people that already are using saturnian qualities of of management of uh, discrimination of good organization and Mars are ones of initiative uh, when it comes to finances, resources. They can just embark on a new project that makes them a lot of money that they'll be working through two years. Uh, The results might not be immediate, but they'll be working hard on something that will bring them really lasting results of money and with effort. It's not going to be just like, oh, I'm launching it and it's making me money from... It's constantly, you know 
you're putting your energy there plus the third house eclipse is helping you be open to learning new things and how to do new things you know the second house might be some extensive work with teeth <laughs> i hope you're not embarking on it. i've been i've gone like nine times to the dentist and such and mars have been close together in the last two weeks it's, <laughs> it's on one tooth only but yeah it's hard work as well but you can do some of this second house is your tastes your uh, okay Oof. i don't want to spend too much on the second house but second house is also family uh and just like the fourth house is family and you'll see the other new conjunction is happening there so there is big focus there family values traditions maybe some of you might want to preserve and reconstruct or get in touch with some family their own personal family traditions second houses you know the stories the um, values there they might be focused as well uh, all right so saturn and mars imagine saturn is master builder mars is the muscle you have those together what can you achieve there in anything to do with possessions with resources with the master builder in self-worth how you appraise yourself it's the face as well the second house some of you might start some you know saturn is to tighten uh to to mars is to do exercise facial yoga exercises this really work i've been doing for a few weeks only and this thing uh, you do something like that and uh, this goes away so yeah you work with the second house whether it's with your teeth with your face but you do the hard work you don't just go to you know someone to do it for you it's, you do the hard work and you get the best results <laughs> over two years okay um and of course money very important and family there might be some stresses here with family there might be some expenses that come but they will trigger off this process of developing the saturn mars quality now the other big event let's go to very positive energy is the uranus jupiter conjunction it ha it's never going to happen again in your life it's happening on the 20th of april but it's already in action since the beginning of the year because they've been close enough and it will continue almost the whole year because there will be close enough the whole year so this year not specifically just the 20th it's the peak then around that time but this whole year there is powerful new beginning new birth in this fourth house of yours and that is on your soul level and that is how you feel about life this is your base vibration of happiness or discontent you know everyone has like a certain level that they very rarely shift away from it's for someone it might be constant meh feeling and sometimes you go up and down when something interesting happens for others it might be constant uplifted these are emotionally healthy people usually for others it might be constant base of drabness you know but this is your constant uh, main vibration it comes from the root from the family from the early childhood which is the fourth house the vibration your soul vibration i'll call it and jupiter and uranus here are saying you have a once in a life chance this conjunction will not repeat again in your life to really shift and quite fast your main vibration emotional vibration to really break and cut away with the past because the fourth house rules your karma from the family the ancestors you know how we get born in families that repeat our own personal karma uh, so maybe if you have depressive in influences your grandmother was also depressive and whatever and they say when you heal yourself you heal the ancestors well here it's almost like a divine blessing that there is opportunity now to shift your vib main vibration emotional vibration which means that you're disconnecting from the family patterns if there were some traumas with mother ancestors father uh if there's some repeat patterns there they all got divorced or they all get diabetes or they all are poor or whatever they all have something repeating there you have to look what it is you know for some is al alcoholism in the family for others everyone is divorced well, you know what such a rare opportunity jupiter and uranus to cut this connection and it's happening in the constellation critica this conjunction which is a knife 
uh, and it critica means challenge and a knife you cut a challenge with a knife you deal with it like bam so sudden raise in the vibration psychologically sudden realization if you work with a psychologist sudden psychological healing sudden realizations about your childhood and forgiveness jupiter is forgiveness and quickly raising your vibration uranus and the external how it can manifest is that there is a whole renewal in your personal life it can indicate the beginning of motherhood for some fourth house you know uh, becoming a parent because you this higher vibration it can open the opportunity for you for parenting for improving yourself as a parent for joy that it keeps giving for the next 14 years till the next jupiter cycle or source of abundance that becomes your family and family life or anything to do with real estate can become a source of abundance and wealth because they're happening in taurus sign of money Jupiter and Uranus indicates some abundance. So something that is starting to develop this year can be a source of giving abundance, Jupiter, for many years ahead, a whole cycle. So it can be motherhood, it can be real estate, it can be that, it can be, you can find a piece of land that makes you feel abundant and that makes you feel inspired that you're working it or you might find the perfect house. You might find the perfect place to live in that you feel at home. Some of you might have found it already, others. It's just like finding where you belong, finding where your soul feels the best, building, uh, uh, feeling, raising your overall vibration. Uh, it can be making money from a real estate or just blessings and wealth. Wealth is not always material. Wealth through emotion, through bonding, through creating a family, through family members or through someone, you know, loved close one uh, starting a family making a house wealth through real estate uh, psychological liberation jupiter and uranus is freedom being liberated jupiter and uranus is like aha inspirational moment feeling i know where i belong or this is home or this is where my soul is at home you're my home you or this place so they might be, or even if you start something with real estate, it might be a great source of freedom and abundance for you. Something with fourth house can be nurturing, caring, professions, can be professions connected to fishing, to, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of more modern <laughs> variations for the fourth house, except the fishing and sailing and shipping. <laughs> uh, wealth from the earth as well or from family and so on so yeah let's and as i said maybe you you might have to be more with your finances to be more uh, controlled because maybe you find the right place you know you're investing into your family or some idea connected to the fourth house which can be hotels real estate bnb and so on yeah, but uh, there's deep psychological realizations that are happening, deep psychological freedom from patterns, ancestral patterns. And it's like a renewed, your soul is being renewed, your sense of, and a new role might be come to you, fourth house role of nurturer, carer, and so on. And of course, don't forget Pluto is in your sign. <laughs> oh, so you is, uh, the life is, for the next 20 years, so if you're early born Aquarius, in, in particular, you'd feel it. Life will never be the same. Pluto will transform you totally. <laughs> you're transforming yourself, but Pluto will, is turning your life around. It's giving you strength, emotional resilience, incredible emotional uh, resilience and strength. Um, to be authentic, to be yourself, not to put on masks with different people. Pluto just hates bullshit. bullshit. Pluto hates superficiality, fakeness, just whatever you feel you you have to say, it, even if people don't like you for that, or people actually will love you a lot more, they'll be amazed by your strength uh, with that. And, and when you're authentic, you, you have power over others uh, and over yourself. So thank you so much, Aquarius.